I wanted to share this episode with you guys because I had a really interesting talk with Dr. Matthew Shadagas. He is an assistant professor at the University of Albany, and he studies experimental particle astrophysics, in particular the direct detection of dark matter. But I wanted to talk to him about the UAP phenomenon, something that he has treated seriously his entire life. He gave me some really good answers to a couple questions that I had. I shared some of this interview a few months ago, and so I wanted to kind of give you the extended cut of our conversation and hope to hear from him again soon. But I hope you guys enjoy this. Why is this so important to you, and what do you think about people taking it seriously now? Even if it's all wrong and nonsense and mistaken optical collusions, can we really take that risk? Because the way I look at it is it could be if even, if even a tiny fraction of UFOs or UAP, whatever you want to call them, are some sort of non-human intelligence and some sort of crap, that's the most important discovery in human history. And I think that's worth some risk of taking the time to study, to study them. And many of my colleagues disagree, but I just don't see the logic in that because the way I look at it is, all right, so what if it's not real and you've, you've wasted your time? I don't think that's the case. I mean, former President Obama said there are a fraction of, of sightings that aren't explained. Do these people know who claim otherwise, including colleagues of mine in the scientific community, do they really they know better than former President Obama? I, I disagree. Um, and so the way I look at it in terms of the, the stigma, which you mentioned, you asked me to expand upon that. I look at this as a it's, it's a tautology. It's an oxymoron. It's circular. Uh, many scientists say there isn't good data that proves this is worth studying. Why? Because you're not allowed to study it. You yeah. see, that's a circle. It's a closed loop. And so it's, it's nonsense because there's no good data. Why is there no good data? Because it's nonsense. You're not allowed to study it. Round and round the circle. Round and round the circle goes. It really feels hush-hush and taboo. So why do you think for so many people this is just not a topic for discussion? I think part of the reason is, is because as humans, we are even subconsciously, even if we don't admit it to ourselves, we are afraid of acknowledging the possibility that we are not the most intelligent species in the universe and that we're not the only one. We have a lot of subconscious bias against that possibility. Um, you know, and we can't even solve our own problems, right? We still have racism, sexism. We can't even solve our own problems. We're not ready to acknowledge the possibility that there's another race out there potentially that's not even the human race you know a different species i think we're not ready for that possibility and so i think that both scientists non-scientists alike have a deep seated prejudice deep seated even if we don't admit it that we are the only intelligent life forms in the entire galaxy in the entire universe even if that's so improbable statistically um we just don't want to let go of that but there's another aspect as well which is i think there's the national security aspect you touch on classification another aspect is if we are dealing with real technologies from non-human intelligence again our petty human squabbles get in the way and different countries want to be the first to steal the technology for warfare if there is real technology out there. And I think that is a very bad approach. We're all, again, worried about warfare and worried about, and that's where that's the national security angle. So I think anything that is real gets classified by not just US government, Russian, Chinese government, because they're afraid that their competing countries are going to steal, uh, uh, steal ideas. So that, that, that's, those are my thoughts on, on, that, on those aspects. So have you always been interested in this? And when did you decide to start getting vocal about it? So I started getting vocal about it thanks to a, a colleague of mine you should try to interview as well. But like, it's crazy. He's got like an NBC interview later today. He's so busy. But my colleague, Kevin Knuth, he has many YouTube videos. If you Google, if you look up his name, K-N-U-T-H, he, he is my colleague here at the physics department at the University at Albany. And he is what really convinced me that there is real scientific already even preliminary evidence like the the famous 2004 Nimitz encounter and similar ones like the Navy videos he really helped convince me that this was there was real science here and that it wasn't just all nonsense and psychological and so he was really a catalyst but I do have to say that this it does go back to my childhood I didn't dismiss this years ago even because I um I I, I grew up watching Star Trek 
And I, even though that's fictional, it helped acculturate me to the idea that aliens could be real, even if we didn't have the scientific evidence yet. And so I, I was interested even from childhood, thanks to science fiction, like, like Star Trek, um, The Next Generation. I'm not old enough for the original series. It was not even around on reruns when I was a kid, but, but I, I was sort of acculturated to, to the possibility. And so I grew up thinking, oh yeah, of course aliens are real. It'll just take us time to get the real proof. That, that was my original thinking. Do you think that we have proof right now somewhere? I, I think it's possible. And if that's true, it would make me very angry because not just as a scientist, but as a taxpaying citizen, it makes me really angry that the government would not publicly under the guise of national security would be hiding what could be the most important discovery in human history and the this and and it helps feed the stigma because you have scientists like neil degrasse tyson out there you have debunkers like nick west who are saying oh it's all nonsense because what if the best data is is there and it's hidden and and it and but i do have to ask a good scientist i do still have to be skeptical area 51 might have nothing because one way that i look at it is if aliens have such great technology why would they ever crash i mean that kind of doesn't make sense. So I want to be, I, I am convinced there is something real here, but I'm still skeptical that that the government has, you know, like a locked up flying saucer from Roswell or something. I'm, I'm trying to still be skeptical about that because I don't see how an advanced civilization would crash. They would be better than that. But, you know, I joke with my friends, there's some plaque somewhere. My, my friend Kevin came up with this on some alien planet that is dedicated to all the, all the aliens lost on Earth that got crashed. You know, there's like a plaque to them dedicated to the memory. It's oh. like, I, I wonder, you know, if that's out there, out there somewhere. But yeah, I, I, I am very careful. I don't want to jump to the conclusion that, oh yeah, we've got everything already in Area 51 and stuff. I am open to that possibility though. I'm definitely open to the possibility that there's stuff there that is hidden and hasn't been uh, revealed. So people are starting to talk about this more and obviously destigmatize it a bit. So what would you like to see happen next? I would like to see is funding mechanisms. So like the Department of Energy, National Science Foundation, government funding agencies allow scientists to get paid and allow students to get paid to work on it. Because one of the reasons why no progress is made is everyone like myself, Kevin, and like-minded individuals have to work on it like on nights and weekends in our free time because we have our day jobs. And the way to fix this is to have official funding mechanisms that allow real scientists to study this so that they're, they actually are paid to do it. And don't get me wrong, I don't care about money. I make uh, enough in my academic year salary as a professor. I care about the truth getting out there, but the truth will never get out there if I can't pay for equipment to study this, if I can't pay for students, for undergraduate and graduate students to collect and analyze data because they're scared. The students be like, I don't want to work on this in free time. In my free time, it'll ruin my career. And so that's how we're going to get past it is official funding mechanisms where scientists like me can apply to get money the same way I, I apply to get money to study dark matter or my friend Kevin applies to get money to study exoplanets is have an official funding mechanism through the existing funding agencies of the United States. So why should we all really care? I mean, why do you think it's so important to find the truth? Even if there's a tiny fraction of a percent chance because of all the improbabilities in interstellar travel, if there's even the tiniest fraction of a chance that there exists non-human intelligence, that is such an important discovery that it's, that it's worth it. Curiosity aside, this is, could be the most important discovery in human history. But also let's look at the aspect of that. We're not talking about non-human intelligence. We're not talking about craft. Why aren't we interested in knowing the truth? Like what if it's an atmospheric phenomenon that we've never discovered? Countless examples of this. Ball lightning, earthquake lights. We used to laugh at them that there were pseudoscience. Meteors, another great example. Thomas Jefferson wrote about how, oh, people believe rocks from, from fall from the sky, they're dumb. And look, it turns out meteors are real. And look how much we've learned from meteors, from meteorites after they have fallen, well, first in the sky, but then if we've fallen and become meteorites, look how much we've learned about planetary science and our solar system. And someone had to take the risk and say, you know what? Maybe all those thousands of people aren't crazy and stupid who have been saying 
saying for thousands of years that rocks fall from the sky. And what if this is another one of those situations? It's not necessarily aliens, not necessarily non-human intelligence. Aren't we curious though? What is the Tic Tac? What is the gimbal? What are these things? Um, I think it's beyond a reasonable shadow of a doubt that they're just glitches in the cameras because then why do they show up on radar? And why do the pilots see them with their eye? You know, the radar and the infrared camera and the pilots all agree. So something happen is happening here that's real. Why aren't we curious to find out what it is? If it's not alien, what if it's a new phenomenon of the Earth's atmosphere? that we've never before discovered. Like I said, ball lightning, earthquake lights. What if it's a naturally occurring phenomenon? Why aren't we curious to get that? If that's the answer, I know all the alien believers will be disappointed, but I wouldn't be because it would be a new phenomenon we've never discovered. Aren't we curious? We should be curious. Curiosity is what drives humanity forward. It's what drives progress. Einstein was the crackpot at one point. Einstein was considered he was insulted in Germany. Obviously, he was racist. He was called, oh, you're a Jew. You don't know what you're talking about. And then in Britain, they said, oh, you're German. You don't know what you're talking about because obviously they didn't like Germans after World War I. So Einstein was once the crackpot with this crazy idea that the speed of light is constant, special relativity. And then a, a few decades later, that's the gospel truth. And now, and now, like, can't disagree with it. So, so you see this in the history of science all the time that sometimes – the fringe element is right. And not always, obviously, there have been a lot of things that didn't pan out in science that were wrong and turned out to be pseudoscience. But occasionally, that one person is right who has the crazy new idea and everyone else is wrong because truth is not a democracy. Truth, the universe doesn't care what you and I think or what all of humanity thinks. The truth is the truth. This is one of the reasons why I'm a scientist is because I want to find the truth with a capital T. I want to find the truth. So what do you think about the declassified Navy videos? By themselves, they don't stand on their own. And that's why you have skeptics like Mick West who could debunk the videos. But on their own, there's some grainy spot and you, you can only conclude so much. However, when that's corroborated, by the eyewitness testimony of the pilots and the radar data where you have objects moving at impossible accelerations, not just in those videos, but that's corroborated by the radar evidence. There's testimony from the radar operators, not just the pilots, but you've got the radar operators like Kevin Day who have come forward. I think that together, that to me is convincing again, not that it's alien craft, it's convincing that this is a real phenomenon. It's not an optical illusion. It's not in people's heads and it's worthy of serious study. So that's the way I look at it is that the videos are just one piece of the puzzle. That being said, my colleague Kevin has a peer reviewed scientific publication, not just some YouTube video where someone's trying to debunk the videos, but he's got a scientific publication that says if you analyze those videos and combine it with the pilot testimony and treat it because it is consistent, you find impossible velocities and accelerations in those videos that cannot be explained by American technology, cannot be explained by Russian or Chinese technology cannot be explained by any human technology we have unless there's a country out there that has technology centuries ahead of the United States, Russia, and China. It's like, you know, Wakanda in Black Panther, you know, there's a high country hiding on earth that has better technology. And you can't explain it away as like, like, oh, those calculations are wrong because it's a fly in the camera or something. But then why did the pilots see a physical object floating around, flying around that corresponds with the infrared camera data? So yeah, that, that's my take on the, on the videos is in the big picture context, they're more believable. By themselves, you can easily debunk them, unfortunately. But when you combine them with the pilots and the radar operator testimony, you cannot explain them away as being something boring and ordinary. Do you think any of this is classified to prevent public meltdown? Yes, I think we've seen this already with COVID-19 and with the BLM riots and also January 6th. Absolutely. I, I think that if we learn there is intelligent life other than humans, it would cause mass panic. But I think that it's worse to withhold the truth because as a scientist, to me, the higher ideal is openness and truth. And as a journalist, I'm sure you might have similar feelings to me. The truth is more important than worrying about the effects of the truth. Great examples of this is during the pandemic, there were 
you know, different agencies would say half truths before we knew the full truth. And then it, conspiracy theories are born and, in, and craziness happens because you don't say the full truth right from the off the bat. And so like you, you, you start getting conspiracy theories and then you get the pro mask and the anti mask folks. And why does that happen? Part of the reason why is because we dole out the truth in pieces instead of assuming humanity can put on you know, can drop the diapers and grow up and hear the full truth. I do think there'll be panic temporarily, but I think that it's better in the long run. It's better in the long run. Um, just like, you know, recent events have, pro have proven that, I think, to me, is recent events with the pandemic and, and George Floyd and all these things have, told, have shown me that it's better to share uncomfortable truths with everyone and talk about them. Let's talk about racism. Let's talk about all the aspects of the virus. Let's talk about both the good news and the bad news and not just focus on the bad news and just focus on the good news. Let's focus on the, the big picture and the aspects of these things. And so I think in the short run, it would be bad. If like tomorrow Biden said, oh, by the way, it's aliens. I think that would be bad in the short run, but good in the long run in the sense that wouldn't it be worse if 50 years from now we're told, oh, by the way, we knew all along, we've been lying for 100, 150 years. Sorry, I think that's worse than just getting just getting it out now, just saying what we know and stop hiding the, the truth. Now, to be clear, I can't prove we're hiding it, right? I have I have no proof it's aliens and the government knows. That's just speculation. But if it's true, I would be very angry if they come out and say, Oh yeah, we've known since 19, you know, 40 something. I would I would be furious.